Hello, it's been a while. It's been one week to be precise. It's Sunday, the 17th of June, and the code quest is still going. It hasn't stopped. Uh, we were at the NSC for a week, so we were presenting Grease Pencil 2.8, this awesome uh, stuff from Daniel Beisted. We, we, it, it was really nice. But I didn't bring my laptop, so I didn't make any videos this week. But that was great, actually, because when I came back, I compiled Blender and I saw all these changes that it made me want to make a video like now <laughs> on a Sunday. I came to the office just to make a video. I was dying to share all this news. So um, there's a few things on the interface that have changed. I want to not go through all of the changes from last week, but uh, mainly cover those that are pretty obvious, right? As you open Blender today, wink. So the main change is, I think that the, the one more obvious is that when you're looking at the settings, it's a new row of little dots in here, which if you use uh, a brighter theme, such as Flatty Light, you can see it better. It's a little dark dot, which represents a property that can be keyed, that can be animated. So it means that, for example, here I'm uh, Focal length, I can just click on it and it will add a keyframe. And then I can go to another frame, change it. Oh, <laughs> when it's blinking, that's creepy. <laughs> and I can key it again and it will animate. So that's one way um, of animating right now. It's uh, also a, a quick way to see when the properties, uh, you, it's it can be animated. If the property can't be animated, it won't be shown, but when it can, you can actually tell before even clicking on it. So I think that's pretty pretty handy. And uh, of course it works with the auto key. So if you're in another frame and you just change it, it will auto key as well. And the great thing is that it also works when click and dragging on a column. So you can click drag the whole and key, key the whole uh, just uh, row. You can also click to and key and you can also see if a property is driven, it will show this <laughs> very cute car icon that is going to be replaced for something better. But right now it represents it's driven, uh, has a driver. So yeah, that will make things a bit easier because sometimes you have to guess, like right click and insert keyframe, or you can also press I to insert a keyframe. That's uh, the old way of doing it. Uh, you can still do it, of course, it's much faster. But you will have to, like, if, if you didn't know that the resolution can be keyed, you have to press I and then, yeah, just read in the, in the notifications that it cannot be keyed. So it gives more discoverability to, to make it easier for newcomers to see it and for older people as well, because when new properties are added, you want to know if they can be keyed or not. So that was the first shock that I had this week. Then the other shock that I had was when I was moving things around. I was I was inserting new objects, for example, in the scene. You start doing things and bam, a, wait a minute, something wanna blow your mind. What, what? Okay, then. Uh, a new panel, it's, well, it's not really a new panel, actually, this panel existed before. It's a panel of the redo panel, it's called. Um, it's accessible in 2.7 in the toolbar, in the, in the panel of the T on the bottom, or you can also press F6 back um, in 2.7 as well. Like many versions ago, you can press it and then it will just bring all these settings. But the thing is, you have to press a button or you have to open it from the top, from the, the toolbar and it was never really ac that, ma that accessible. So right now, the um, current way of doing it it will be changed in the future, it will be expanded in the future, is by having this panel in the bottom left corner. Of course, you can also minimize it, and then you can, the next time you keep doing any action in your scene, like uh, adding a lamp, it, it won't uh, pop up again, it's just the one time. But it's handy, for example, if you're, um, if you're just opening Blender, it gives it also more discoverability, or if you, have a property that you that op often and you want to, for example, do things from here, like change the rings. Um, I think it will make it easier for people to discover it. This panel was before was available in the top bar 
uh, because it's it's a global property. Basically, every action, most of the actions have a redo um, panel. Even some of them have like not a lot of options, like delete doesn't really have much, so it's not really that useful. But uh, for those that do have, it's um, it's handy to have it there. And yes, this brings back the issue that not every editor has it, but actually the implementation allows it to be um, to be easily um, implemented in other editors without much work. It's actually super easy to, uh, that's what I heard, that uh, <laughs> it ca it's super easy to add it to the other um, editors. So for example, if you are doing a UV unwrapping, you get the UV unwrap options down here, but if you're doing, for example, um, um, let's align this, for example, let's align this line, aligned, straighten Y, yeah, that one worked. But you can also change it in the redo panel because it's implemented in the image editor. And it will be implemented in the editors that make sense, of course, just so it's a bit more uh, intuitive. And it's right now it's, it's stuck basically to the, um, to the bottom of the um, of the window, but it will be possible eventually to move it around and keep it somewhere in the interface, just like in 2.4. So yes, that is uh, it's being worked on. It's it's a bit glitchy sometimes. You know, it takes a bit to refresh. There are a few things that need to be um, tackled, but so far it's quite. Um, I think it's an improvement to have it right there because when we have other. Uh, it, when it can be simplified to not show everything, which is the most important settings that would make it easier and more accessible. Then the second thing that, that um, I noticed when I was uh, here looking up happening in the new Blender is that the headers now are all spread across. There is a new property for those that make add-ons or change the interface. Uh, as you can add separators, you can add separators spacers, which means it's gonna add space between the sections. So in that case, for example, um, the concept in the viewport right now is to have, I'm going to go back to the other side, I like it better. <laughs> um, the concept is that basically all the view settings are on the um, right side of the viewport and all the object settings are on the left side of the viewport. So for example, um, if I mean um, let's go, yes, add a cube and let's go to, well, let's use the pie menu to go to sculpt. For example, here you have all the uh, brushes, you have the mode and you have the menu for it. And if you have the top bar, you have all the settings as well for this brush, or you can also access them from the um, properties context. So it's um, all over the place. You can work with or without, so it's very flexible. And uh, if you're modeling, for example, you will also find other um, section dedicated to all of, all of the tools that were up here. And they were up there because some of them were global, like snapping is global. Like if you're snap, oh, that's a nice glitch. If you're snapping, if you turn on snapping, it turns it on in every editor, even the node editor and that's something I don't really like because I, one thing is I want to align this um, nodes but I don't want it to be enabled here for example and that will be fixed eventually it's something that needs to be moved from a global setting to an editor setting but the um, but bringing it back to the viewport makes much more sense um, same with proportional editing and, uh, and pivot point and the other popovers then another change that I noticed is that the view cube is not, um, no, it's not called view cube, it's the, the little widget, the manipulator in the corner. It's no longer uh, enabled by default, but it is still enabled and it will be replaced when we turn it on. And it also has the buttons in a horizontal row. This design will change, so don't worry. There is a mockup that I think I already shown once and uh, that it will show it a bit better. So that was the that was for the headers. Yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty it's, it's also an improvement because when you have it in the timeline, um, you can finally have the play buttons in the center, you know, so it's easier to, to spot. It's more like a like a player. And all the other editors also benefit from it. And all the settings are not all in one corner like the image editor had, for example. Um, all the um, 
settings used to be on like all spread all over, but now it's a bit more in order. So it's cool. The same for the um, view for the viewport. For example, you have the uh, object modes and then you have the mesh modes. And here you have the um, image like the source and then the selection mode. So it's similar. And what else? The oh the layout. This I, this actually happened before I left. Actually, I was involved in, in making it. I was testing it. Mastian uh, made the code, and I it implemented it quickly in some of the um, panels in the uh, object settings. So basically, it's flexible layout. It means that the single column layout, when enabled, can be uh, can become multiple columns, and it will try to fit as many as possible in the given space. So. Yes, now we can fit more things if you have it uh, more, um, you have it bigger, and uh, it it really uh, it really gives that feeling that like like a website, you know, I can make it, <laughs> and it's in the in the code actually how it's split and when it's split. So some in some parts it doesn't always work. In this case, for example, the um, it used to work just fine, but with the new little uh, widgets here. It's something we need to need to think about how to arrange these uh, lock icons because they can be animated. Actually, this is this is legit. This is how it works. But yeah, because they are in the same row, it just <laughs> just looks a bit strange. Um, but for example, in Delta Transform, it works just fine. And they have three, three, and three. So that's another thing that changed last week. And what else? Um, the I think that's I already I covered that part. Oh, the um, presets. Now the preset selector that used to be spread all across the header and the, the below the header as first item now is embedded in the header itself of the, of the panel. And at the moment, it's just the same uh, using the same system that we had before. So, for example, if you have a, a for example, a camera and you want to change the safe areas, for example, without actually expanding the um, the panel, you can click on it and you can choose which preset you can uh, make new ones and you can also remove them. So for the time being, this is the, the, the way to access them, which is very similar to the one we had before. Even the before was actually, like now you can't really see which mode you're in, um, like when you select it. But we couldn't do that before either because you will set it up. You will you will choose like 1080 and it will show 1080. But then if you change the 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 size of the values of any of the presets, it wouldn't update the header. So the the the, the pull down. So it's it's the same. For that to work, there will be some uh, work involved in rewriting the whole uh, preset system. So. Uh, it will take longer, but I think for the time being, it's, a, it's an improvement because then it gives it more visibility. The star icon, not a complete fan. Maybe when we have the, the new monochrome um, uh, icons, like for flat icons, it will look nicer, which is an outline, but it's work in progress. And I think that's uh, pretty much it for this. There is also a few other tweaks. One that I liked is that it's a bit more hidden, but basically when you are in... Um, when you have a popover that has a switch on, like for example, the these um, panels that have a switch on and off, Blender will automatically make a nice little switch for it. So, for example, in the D in Topo, you can um, it, you can see it working. You can actually enable the Topo from the menu without actually having to expand it. So uh, some people suggested that the detail size will be moved to a more accessible place. Actually, that's a good idea. Um, but yes, it's a work in progress, but it's actually going pretty well. And I think that's all for now. I, sh I made a longer video than, than usual, but I am um, just trying to remember if I forgot anything. The pie menus I already mentioned uh, in previously, like the, uh, the one for tilde for moving around that's still there, and the ones for uh, changing the object modes that is also still there but there has been some improvements to make it a bit to behave a bit nicer that will sum it up for this for for today no not this week sorry no today i will continue doing videos every day for as long as i can the cold quest ends in two weeks yes today is june 17th actually 
as I'm doing this, I'm uh, watching the <coughs> the football, the, the World Cup, and also the Cold Quest ends, but the development doesn't. So if you feel like you like what you're seeing and would like to continue, you know you can always donate to the development fund, which helps keep Blender development happening. There is always uh, grants. You can see exactly how it's uh, how how it's spent all the money. All the in this case the 316 members um, support contributions. You can see how it's granted for every month all the way to 2011. <laughs> and we're gonna keep doing it. We plan to make it a bit nicer. So because it, we've seen it worked uh, really well for the Cold Quest, people liked. What, um, how, how it was presented, so we're gonna work on it to make it a bit nicer, but you can help even with just a little bit. And let's keep this going, yes. I will see you again in the next video, I swear. Yes, yes, I promise, I promise, I promise. Yes, like pinky promise. Pinky